What's up, Internet? It's your result here, and my deep dive into the many people connected into the Jeffrey Epstein case continues. Uh, the map that I've been building behind the scenes continues to grow, and it's been slowed up a little bit because there's a bug, it seems, with the software, which means that I can't save the layout properly. I'm just waiting for the people that run the system that I'm using to get back to me to tell me how to fix that. But Anyway, uh, one of the subjects that's come up in the last couple of days is as a result of the photo that's been circulating of Courtney Love, seen with uh, Andrew Windsor, uh, who himself was accused of rape and abuse at uh, the Epstein Island, I think, and other places. So, uh, really, Courtney Love, lead singer of band Hole and ex-wife since he's deceased of rock star Kurt Cobain of Nirvana is a, a rabbit hole to dive into on her own in a sense. I have looked into her life and Kurt Cobain's life extensively in the past. I was a big fan of Nirvana at the time and I never would have thought that she had anything to do with his uh, death personally based on what I could see publicly but that wasn't a lot at the time and at one point there was a thread on the David, Guy David Icke forum on the subject of Kurt Cobain's death, and it, I think it went on for like two or three hundred pages of posts or comments. It's probably the longest thread I've ever seen anywhere in terms of content. It took me it took me well over a week just to even skim through reading it all. Some of the things in that thread were, you know, really revelationary, and some of the things I found as a result of digging into those things and then posted back on there, I've not seen said anywhere else before. Some of them to do with major crimes that I would say there was good evidence posted there, which never really went anywhere and then the thread was deleted it had been on there for years that thread and within about two or three weeks of me posting on there it was deleted i don't know if that's because i personally happened to post something that hadn't you know that people didn't want to see or uh, didn't want to be seen i don't know if it was just coincidence that it just happened to be just after i posted on there but anyway as a result of looking into everything there i became i wouldn't say certain but it seemed like there's a lot of evidence to show that that Kurt Cobain was murdered and there's fairly good evidence that Courtney Love may have been involved, but that's not really what I'm wanting to talk about here. What else has come up is that her dad, basically, uh, I don't know a huge amount about him, but apparently he was big into LSD, managed uh, The Grateful Dead, and describes himself as a sociopath slash psychopath, and basically says that Courtney Love has that trait in her as well, and that's why he openly has accused her of murdering Kurt Cobain. Her own, fa her own father has accused her of that. So, you know, if, you, if your dad's accusing you of murdering your ex-husband or husband, then, you know, I think people should take that seriously. And especially when he has admitted himself to being a psychopath and saying that she is as well, that's quite a big deal in my mind. And the reason why she ties into this, aside from the photos having surfaced of her with Andrew Windsor, alleged Prince of England, um... Ultimately, many people have pointed to her probable or likely, seemingly possible connection to the MK Ultra trauma-based mind control program in America, Canada, and elsewhere. And that's really what the topic of this video I'm putting out here today is. It's more about that than about her, but um, it's worth bearing in mind, if you're not familiar with MK Ultra, it's a huge subject, uh, but, I mean, there isn't really even a short version of it, but there was... A time after World War II when Nazi scientists were taken from Germany under a, a project named Operation Paperclip, and they were taken to America, most of them, as I understand it, quite a large number of them, and set to work, instead of being imprisoned, they were set to work for America in NASA, in various different scientific projects, secret projects, you name it. And, you know, probably most of the people at the time in World War II who fought fighting the Germans probably would have thought that was a bad idea. But Apparently people in the government didn't, you know, so uh, they seemingly gained quite a lot of power within American secret uh, realms, let's say, the military and NASA and other sort of black project areas. Some of them, as I understand it, did. But one of the things they were researching apparently in the death camps in Germany was mind control and trauma-based mind control. So basically they were torturing people, as I understand it, to... Uh, tried to turn them into slaves and to mind control them and understand how the mind worked. Now, I personally haven't ever seen actual proof of that from Germany, to be honest. But based on what I have seen, I would say it seems quite likely to be true, but I can't prove that. However, I would say there is substantial evidence and pretty much proof that this project 
was undertaken in America and Canada and probably Britain to some extent, and just continued. And it was called MK Ultra, or at least it was back then. Probably now it has a different name. They claim they stopped it, uh, you know, decades ago, but you know, I doubt that's true to be honest. Uh, there are many whistleblowers who have come out since then saying that this project has continued. They were even born into this project as babies and raised in this project, traumatised from birth, and they've seen just terrible, nightmarish things as part of that and gone through nightmarish things. But where I'm going with this is that one of the aspects of this project, I mean, particularly since it was in the 60s and 70s, really you know, became, uh, I think it was used quite a lot back then, to create mind-controlled slaves, ultimately, and assassins and people that could essentially carry run programs as a kind of robotic human uh to achieve certain goals of their programmers which the people would never normally do and the key thing about all of this is that once successfully programmed the person doesn't even know that they're carrying out the mission they effectively have a split personality which could have anything up to maybe a hundred different people literally within them as different personalities uh, and these different people with different knowledge different memories different training different awareness can be recalled by trigger code words and so on uh, and so this basically means that someone who's gone through this process can be telephoned given a code word suddenly they switch into another alter version of themselves which is an assassin they go and kill someone and then they switch back and they don't even remember doing it so when they're uh if they're uh arrested and questioned then they won't be able to give any clues as to who set them up to do it or anything about it because they won't even remember doing it and that's pretty much what happened with um, Sirhan Sirhan uh, and various other killers throughout the last few decades of key political figures and others so that's a big subject in itself but one of the key things here is that one of the methods that apparently that was used to do this torture uh, and mind control was LSD combined with torture basically and um excessive repeated hypnotic programming and over and over and over again literally abusing people and torturing them to try and wipe their mind and reprogram them with a new personality and so i found this video here as a result of looking into the courtney love situation mainly because there were people tech connecting her to mk ultra now i don't know whether that's true or not i've not seen any proof that that's really true but the patterns do fit quite well so i can understand why they've said that and you know, it may not it may just be that she comes from a, a family line of people who are a bit, as her dad says, psychotic or psychopathic and took a lot of LSD and therefore was a messed up person. Maybe her dad's messed up and he's lying, I don't know. But uh, I know that Jason Burmus shared a screenshot of a post from her dad recently from Facebook, which I can't find, which may not even be real, basically claiming that um, the Courtney Love was actually part of Epstein's team of procurers of women you know I that's complete hearsay as far as I'm concerned but that's why I started looking into this and that drew me to this video which I'm showing you on the screen now which I've never seen before I've looked into MK Ultra quite a lot but I've never never seen this and apparently it's quite famous but um this is a guy called as you can see Dr. D. Corridan Hammond and I'd never heard of him before basically this is an hour and a half talk which was on YouTube, and as you can see on the screen here, he was president, I think still is president, I couldn't check this because it doesn't say on their website exactly who is the president of the uh, American Society for Clin Clinical Hypnosis, but he was at one time, and also as it says, the president of the International Society for Neurofeedback and Research. He's got over 30 years of research behind him, and you can see um, on this list of papers that he's written, it's a long list, basically. Um, now, you know, I haven't taken the time to go through all of these, but I'm going to trust that these are real papers. And um, as you can see, you know, hypnotic suggestion papers, generally he's an expert in that field of, of basically hypnosis and even mind control and that kind of thing. So what's so special about this video? Well, he's talking here to a group who meet annually, as it says here, on specifically on the subject of basically psychological abuse and multiple personality disorder. And he gave a talk here back in 1992 where he literally talked about, he didn't mention MK Ultra, I don't think, but by name, but he was talking about that program. And what he's essentially saying here, he gives some history about how, how what I just mentioned about Nazism and, and uh, 
trauma-based mind control and that kind of thing, making its way to America. But his main point is he's talking about cults and how cults, particularly in America, were using it, probably still are using these kind of techniques to create altered personality people to achieve certain goals, just like I mentioned, which would be slightly different, let's say, to when a secret service like the CIA were to create, uh, as they call it, Manchurian candidate or uh, super soldier or whatever you want to call them. Cults were doing it apparently for a variety of reasons. It could be to kill people or it could be to kill people in rituals. It could be making snuff movies or to take part in child abuse, child trafficking, that kind of thing. Basically, programming people to do horrific crimes for their own reasons, which may be to make them lots of money through twisted, sick, sadistic people that pay to have this stuff done. It could be just part of what their belief systems are to do with their cult or religion and perhaps some sort of energy work and energy theft or placating spirits, whatever you want to call it. I don't really know exactly why these groups do these things, but there are apparently quite a lot of cults involved that are involved in this kind of thing. Satanic ritual abuse or whatever you want to call it. So he basically, just, this guy, uh, Dr. Hammond, discovered that some of his patients who he was treating for trauma and mental issues were meeting the criteria for ritual abuse and were displaying certain patterns which they shared, which and they'd not met each other. And he was finding that he could ask them certain questions as a result of finding certain things in certain people's minds that shouldn't be there, let's say, certain programs. And he discovered some of them have been basically programmed. And he deprogrammed them and got some of the code words out of them and learned a bit about the programmers as a result of all of this. And what he was doing was asking other patients who had similar symptoms certain key questions. Uh, so, for example, some of the programs relate to Greek uh, letters like alpha, beta, theta, gamma, and so on. He was asking them, do you have these programs in you? And quite often they'd say yes. Um, and he, they would describe what these programs were and the patterns match. So uh, if you listen to this video, you'll hear it in more detail. Uh, he explains that one of the categories of programs was for a killer, one, one was for making snuff movies, one was for uh, different purposes. So he became certain because these different patients were showing the same, that they all contained the same programs. He was certain that this was a real legitimate thing. It wasn't just uh, delusions of one person coming up with strange ideas. It was actually real genuine programming that was happening to certain people in society. So he set about studying this in depth and speaking to other therapists and sort of sometimes giving them hints and clues that this might be going on. But he did it in such a way, he says, that meant that he didn't give any information to these therapists that would put them in a position where they could lead their patients to get false information. So he was he was testing the situation basically as he went along himself to make sure that he was right and that other people were getting the same results, and they were. So he went through and gave this talk uh, where he describes some of his work and deprogramming people who have gone through this cult ritual abuse. Shortly after he gave this talk, as I understand it, he received a lot of death threats, and he even mentions repeatedly in this talk that he'd already received death threats. And he basically just said, this is so terrible that although obviously I don't want to be killed, at the end of the day, I have to risk my life to get this information out because it's so important that we know, that everyone knows that this is going on. It's it's like you couldn't live with himself, basically, I think, if he, if he didn't come out and talk about it. And as I understand it, he received quite a lot of uh, pushback after this in the press. There was a lot of nonsense. As I see it, there was a lot of nonsense and misdirection from the media after this, trying to claim, oh, there's no such thing as satanic ritual abuse. It doesn't exist. Just massive denial, basically. Even though I've seen video from the FBI and, and American police force showing a raid they did on a house where they had, like, basically body parts of humans lying around and all kinds of ritual stuff. And I've even got a copy of the, F I think it's the FBI's own manual on satanic ritual abuse and how to research it and, and look into those cases. So the idea that it doesn't exist is nonsense. But that's what apparently some of the medium, major media outlets were saying at the time. Um, but I, I just leave it to you. Listen to what he says. Does he sound like he's lying? Does the information he puts across check out? What's to stop these people doing that kind of stuff in underground base? Basically nothing. So, um, you know, only the good heartedness of the people involved. And we've seen countless times that these groups are not good hearted, are they really? I mean, killed nearly a million. I think they killed a million innocent people in Iraq, for example, um, under false pretenses. It was all lies. And yet the people that directed those wars are still out in public, getting paid, living a millionaire lifestyle and so on. So classed as heroes by many people as well, because most people are not looking into the reality of what's going on. But anyway, I digress. So 
Uh, I'm going to skip through this video a little bit here, but uh, you know, I do definitely recommend checking it out. I cleaned up the audio on this. The original version on YouTube was really, really hissy and annoying. It's very difficult to listen to. So I've processed it and cleaned it and, and re-uploaded it. Myself, as well as a few others that I'd shared it with, were hedging out of concern and out of personal threats and out of death threats. Uh, I finally decided to hell with it. If they're going to kill me, they're going to kill me. Sometimes it'll be other drugs as well depending on the kind of programming. They have it, I think, down to a science where um, they've learned you give so much every 25 minutes until the programming is done. They then, as they have that, will describe a pain in one ear, their right ear generally, where it appears a needle has been placed, and they will hear weird disorienting sounds in that ear, while they see photic stimulation, external psychic driving to drive the brain into a brainwave pattern with a pulsing light at a certain frequency. Not unlike the goggles that are now available through sharper image and some of those kinds of stores. Then after a suitable period when they're in a certain brainwave state, they will begin programming. Let me give you an example of one kind of programming oriented to self-destruction and debasement of the person in a patient at this point in time about eight years old who has gone through a great deal. Early programming took place on a military installation. That's not uncommon. So this character here is Ewan Cameron, who was the head of the Canadian Psychological Society. Uh, I, think, I think that's the right name for it. Basically, he was the head of uh, psychology in Canada, full stop, through universities and hospitals. And he was one of the people who was literally doing this kind of quote-unquote research and there are cases which you can find on YouTube where the actual woman who survived, um, basically, she, she went in for some sort of routine uh, psychological help. And he, he had her locked up in a, in a secure private wing, basically for days, on LSD, um, forcing and tied down to the bed, forcing her to listen over and over and over again to this tape recording. Uh, and he was literally trying to wipe her entire personality. This was, I think, quite early research into all this stuff. He was tr trying to see if they could literally wipe someone's personality completely, and they did. And she actually forgot everything. She forgot who she was, who her family were, everything. She couldn't even remember her own name. Uh, and when she eventually, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how she escaped, but she did get out and gradually was helped to remember her memories and then had to go for a very long time and through a very long process of trying to prove that this happened and to get compensation for it. But this is one of the guys who is responsible for that. And as he said here, this does take place and military bases did take place, probably still does um, to this day. And as he as he goes on to explain in this, many of the people who have found later on in life that they, as children, went through this kind of brainwashing uh, were re related to people in the military, uh, often who had been part of certain cults for multiple generations. and. Ultimately, these people were having children and then having this process put onto some of their children. Um, I would suggest that what's basically happened is it's like a virus and someone somewhere in the history has figured out how to do this to people to dis disassociate through torture, probably as a result of torturing people, if you think about it. Probably, let's say, medieval times, through torturing people, they realise that certain psychological traits would happen. People might disassociate and split off their personality and end up with multiple personalities. They eventually figured out that was happening, then thought about it, then realised, hang on a minute, if we can do this and talk to one person and then talk to another person within the same body, then what else could we use that for? And then perhaps at a certain point they realise, oh, well, you know, this is useful for our rituals uh, and we can make people do horrific things they wouldn't normally do. And it's like a virus, isn't it? If 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 one person figures out how to program another person to be their slave in a way that that person doesn't even know they've been programmed to do, then they can also be programmed to have children that are then also programmed. So a father or mother could be programmed to ch program their children to continue serving the slave master, whoever that might be. And if you think it's, it's just horrific, if you think about it, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, very much similar to the way that computer viruses work, I would suggest. And it's like a self-replicating enslavement system 
And it sounds like science fiction or something, but you know, when you listen to how he describes how this works, you can understand how this would how this could be done. I have there are books written on this, and I have seen diagrams and a lot more detail than he goes into here, showing how they use a kind of computer programming systemic approach to um, essentially recall memory compartments within the person's psyche. They're all numbered in a grid, and they keep extensive records on exactly what memory programming beliefs understandings knowledge have gone into each compartment and then they can then recall them later on with code words and so on um so yeah let's continue listening i've treated and been involved with cases who are part of this original mind control project as well as having having their programming uh, on military reservations in many cases we find a lot of connections with the cia This uh, patient now was in a cult school, private cult school, where several of these sessions occurred a week. She would go into a room, get all hooked up, they would do all of these sorts of things. And when she was into the proper altered state now, they were no longer having to monitor it with electroencephalographs. I just want to point out that this quote here from William Casey, some people have said, well, you know, did he really say that? How would you even know? Uh, actually, Barbara Honegger, who was uh, in the meeting when he said this, has confirmed that, yes, she did hear him say that. And she is the source of this quote. Basically, as I recall, she they they were in a meeting with Reagan early on, and Reagan was asking them all, um, I think he was basically sort of asking them what, what your mission is, what's your kind of uh, vision for your job, that kind of thing. And apparently William Casey said that. I just want to point that out because it's it's not obvious exactly how you would even come by this quote. She also had already had placed on her electrodes, one in the vagina, for example, four on the head. Sometimes they'll be on other parts of the body. And they will then begin. And they would say to her, you are angry with someone in the group. She said, no, I'm not. And they violently shocked her. And they would say the same thing until she complied and didn't make any negative response. Then they would continue. And because you are angry with someone in the group, or when, when you are angry with someone in the group, you will hurt yourself. Do you understand? She said no, and they shocked her. They repeated it again. Do you understand? Well, yes, but I don't want to. Shock her again. Until they get compliance. And then they keep adding to it. And you will hurt yourself by cutting yourself. Do you understand? And maybe she'd say yes, but they might say, we don't believe you. It's shocker anyway. Go back and go over it again. And they would continue in this sort of fashion. She said typically it seemed as though they'd go about 30 minutes. Take a break for a smoke or something. Come back. They may review what they've done and stop, or they might review what they've done and go on to new material. She said the sessions might go a half an hour, they might go three hours. She estimated three times a week. Programming under the influence of drugs in a certain brainwave state, and with these noises in one ear and them speaking in the other ear, usually the left ear associated with right hemisphere, non-dominant brain functioning, and with them taking... Uh, Therefore, and requiring intense concentration, intense focusing, and because often they'll have to memorize and say certain things back word perfect to avoid punishment, shock, and other kinds of things that are occurring. This is basically how a lot of programming goes on. Some of it will also use other typical brainwashing kinds of techniques. There will be very standardized types of hypnotic things done at times. There will be sensory deprivation which we know increases uh, suggestibility in someone. Not total sensory deprivation. Suggestibility has significantly increased from the research. It's not uncommon for them to use a great deal of that, including formal sensory deprivation chambers, before they do certain of these things. Now, let me give you, because we don't have a lot of time, as much practical information as I can. The way that I would inquire as to whether or not some of this might be there would be with ideomotor finger signals after you've set them up. Okay, so he goes on to basically explain to other therapists how they can go about discovering whether their own patients have gone through this kind of ritual-based trauma mind control. 
but he also does go into extensive detail explaining the types of programs, how they are booby trapped, how they're basically programmed so that if a therapist tries to deprogram them, uh, they may, um, you know, but for example, report back to their handlers uh, all of the results of the therapy sessions. Uh, they may basically sort of feign sickness so they don't attend the session or in extreme cases they may actually kill themselves in order to not give away the secrets so he had to go through quite laborious and unexpectedly complicated processes a bit like diffusing a bomb actually to uh to remove the programs from the people to stop them killing themselves so that he could then clear out other programs and help them recover themselves and, and heal and I can actually point you to, I won't, because I, I, I'm not sure whether she would appreciate the exposure, but th there is actually at least one person on YouTube at the moment who I know of who uh, claims to be an MK Ultra survivor, basically, who has gone through extensive detail, detailing her own uh, deprogramming and healing. And, uh, you know, you can see there's many, many videos of her talking in different altars. There'll be, you know, one one part of her will come forward, then another part will come forward, different personalities. And then a few days later, she'll say, oh, I've gone through this healing process. I've integrated those two together now. So now they don't exist anymore. Now they're all part of me. It very much is like uh, a fractured person, ultimately, with all these different fragments within that are still her, but that have their own identity um, with their own objectives and um, perceptions and feelings, ultimately. Uh, their own angle on things, all needing certain things in order to come back to holistic balance within. And it's, you know, very interesting from a kind of perspective of learning, but absolutely disgusting from the perspective of the fact we're even having to talk about this in the first place. Ultimately, most of us have some degree of trauma and some degree of disassociation from certain things. If you've been in a car accident or had a serious illness or a loved one's died, that kind of thing, it's quite common for the trauma of that to cause you to fragment a little bit inside yourself. And what's been learned as a result of all of this terrible research, you could call it, could have been used. I mean, obviously, they weren't intending it to be used for healing, but the point is that the resources and energy that went into studying all this stuff could have been used to really heal humanity in amazing and powerful ways, and yet it was used to actually do harm, do the complete opposite. So in a way, it's our responsibility, I think, to look into all of this and not only do what we can to make sure it stops, but also to use what we can learn from it to actually help heal ourselves as well. Yeah, I put this in here because it's important to understand this. When a well-packaged web of lies has been sold gradually to the masses over generations, the truth will seem utterly preposterous and its speaker a raving lunatic. So if you've been told that the government's got your best interests in uh, you know, in mind, and they're always looking out for you, and everything they do is for your safety. And then someone comes along and says, "Well, actually, they're basically abducting people and raping them, and mind controlling them, and killing loads of people, and you know, shipping them around the world, and having them murder people, that kind of thing." Uh, you know, if you don't really look into it, you might knee-jerk reaction, and you might have a knee-jerk reaction and call that the person who's telling you an idiot or a lunatic. But you know, in no small part is that due to uh, news sources such as Fox, and ABC, and so on. Um, so this symbol here, uh, if you're not aware, is the Monarch Butterfly, which is part of the uh, Monarch Project, basically part of MK Ultra, uh, which is a whole other subject that relates to all of this specific type of programming, allegedly to create even presidents and people of that nature to create basically uh, mind-controlled people en masse who achieve certain goals from running companies to religions to governments. Uh, which, you know, I don't know how true this is, but if you think about it, and pop stars as well, it really would explain how we have so much evil taking place amongst these top levels of government and so on. And there's so much denial. People don't even seem to acknowledge it. It's like, no, nothing's happening. It's already happening. Um, he also explains how this often, in his deprogramming, he found that they were using, for some reason, the... Uh, Kabbalistic tree of uh, tree of life. So uh, this is part of esoteric teachings from Judaism, and uh, you know I know Freemasons use this, and lots of groups actually use this for their own reasons. Um, he's, I don't think he actually says at any point, "Oh, this is because it's Jewish people doing this." Uh, in my opinion, it's more probably got to do with the uh, um, Freemasons than anything else. But um, 
goes on to talk about certain churches in America connected to Charles Manson and cults. And I threw in Scientology here because I would say they're very much connected as well, whether deliberately or not. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here and it's really worth paying attention to everything that he's got to say. He really did, in my opinion, risk his life to put this information out and it's good that he wasn't murdered, basically, from my perspective. And if you think back to Jeffrey Epstein and, and what he may have been up to with this huge number of people, ability to travel people around the world, uh, of almost unlimited money, it seems, connections all around the world, multiple passports, he basically could do just about anything with regards to human trafficking. And pe many people have pointed out that the Zorro Ranch, which the police still haven't even properly raided, I don't think, properly. I think they had gone in there, but not properly searched it. I think they probably wouldn't have even bothered going in there at all unless people were pressure on them. But, uh, you know, that apparently is right in the middle of a major human trafficking route through New Mexico. Uh, so it would have been perfectly placed for that purpose. And apparently it's totally circled by... Uh, land completely owned and controlled by the governor of New Mexico, who himself has been implicated in numerous extremely dodgy things related to this kind of thing, as I understand it. Allegedly, you know, I don't know that's true. I'm just telling you what I've seen on, on online and, you know, that in my opinion is worth looking into. So, and this is still just touching the tip of the iceberg of all of this. There's so much information. It goes back decades. So many people involved. Uh, it's, you know, this, this video here is now and a half long. You could easily have a 12 hour video on this and still not get into the real, um, all the details of what's out there. But, uh, so yeah, I'll put the link to this YouTube video, uh, in the description here. I haven't uploaded this to three speak because it's quite a long video and uh, at the moment they're charging for uploads by time. So I'm not going to do that, but, uh, please do come over to YouTube and uh, give this a like and a thumbs up and watch it all and share it on and subscribe as well on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed to me there. And yeah, I'd really be happy to have more people knowing about this. I think the more people know about this, the more we're going to recognize the signs of it in people when when they start acting strange around us. And uh, and also when we see crimes committed and we just can't understand how people can go into a school and do mass shootings or you know these kinds of horrible things that people are doing. Maybe you need to consider that actually they're, they're, they're actually a victim of programming themselves. And uh, this is happening on a much larger scale than... Um, most people would even dream was possible. I think we definitely need to consider that. And uh, kudos to uh, Dr. Hammond here for um, being bold enough to come out and tell the world. So as always, do leave a comment under this wherever you see it. Let us know what you think, if you've got any extra information on all of this. And I'll be putting out another update on uh, the Jeffrey Epstein map pretty soon as well. It's growing and growing and growing. So stay tuned. And uh, until next time, peace.